Hi, it's Monday, and of course I am still working away hard on the Polk Total Station Ultralight plans in SketchUp. And right now I'm doing a lot of tedious work of dimensioning so that I can be clear. Uh, the bench was designed in metric, first time ever. All the others were done in, done in standard, and I converted them to metric. This one, I've designed it because of the uh, 32 millimeter or 96 uh, millimeter spacing uh, of the holes to match up with and it works better for cabinetry and it doesn't really affect me when I'm working uh, in um, standard measurements. So I am currently going through the tedium of uh, in the uh, plans and layout. Of course the model is done in SketchUp and the plans are done in layout. It's a uh, layout is part of, of SketchUp Professional and it's how I do my house plans, remodels, etc. So I wanted to show you real quick my workaround, uh, at least what I have found to be the most efficient way, accurate way to uh, get these dimensions showing in both millimeter and in standard. I've chosen to show the primary dimension in metric and then in parentheses show the standard dimension. Now it would be really nice, and I know it wouldn't be hard sketch up if you're listening, to just make this a click of a button where you could set up two dimensions, uh, the format and everything, because you can do all of that with either or, but you can't do both. And if you could just have it so that they would both show up. So I have to do it a little bit manually, but I want to show you how I do that. So you can see here on uh, the, the what I'm working at on the, these are all the parts. There's multiples of some of these parts, but I'm not going to show like two of the same thing. Um, rather, I am going through and uh, at this point, I'm dimensioning and doing a few notes, but I'll go back and put my numbers, my part numbers, which I established on another page, on these so that it'll be real easy to read. So to dimension, um, I will choose the, I just did this angle here and it's the only one I have, so linear um, measurement. And then I'm going to come in here and it is set up. Um, pretty much over on the uh, model here and the dimensioning styles, I can kind of set, I can set up what I want. So I've got it set up for a millimeter with precision of one millimeter and, um, and it's set to the current scale of, of the, this portal or this, this look at the, at the um, parts is not, uh, I didn't draw this in layout. This is actually like a window into the model. It's connected to SketchUp. So if I go back over to SketchUp, you'll see that on my parts tab, this is what we're looking at over in layout. So I have a, you know, this, not a copy of it, but actually a window looking back at this. So I've come back over here. For example, I made a copy of the extension here because it has a dimension, uh, a little um, dado here down that I want to show. So I wanted a copy to do the end here. And so when you look at it straight on, the way you're going to see it in layout, I'll be able to uh, do this dimension right here, whereas I wouldn't be able to do it on this view. But the rest of the pieces, I'll be able to do them all from the top down view. So basically, if I go in here and make a change, and then I go back into layout and I um, get out of the dimensions here. If I right click, if I update model reference, if I've made any changes, boom, it'll be changed automatically in here. So there is that connection, which is real important when you're working on all the details because you don't want to have to think I've got to come change it over here. So again, I'm not drawing any of this in layout. I am looking at it a certain way in layout through a window, through a portal and uh, on other pages, I'll have smaller portals that'll be zoomed in to show detail, and I'll have multiple portable portals on the same page, but they'll all be looking back at the model in SketchUp. That's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm going to show you this dimension now. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to just, uh, it'll snap right to it. I'm going to click, click, and then come out and put it about how I want it to look. And... Um, now you can see that it shows it in the millimeter. Now this is the manual part. I could switch my dimensioning over to standard and do that and have the number, but this is a little faster. I have a Construction Master um, Pro 
app that I use on my phone. I used to use these, the, the physical ones that you bought. I don't have those anymore. I've got one on my uh, iPhone 10 here. And uh, so basically what I'll do is I'll type in that number. So it's 625 and I'll hit convert millimeter. And it'll show that that's 625 millimeters because this is uh, defaults to standard. And so I have to do that conversion first. And then I'll hit inch and it'll show me that's 24 and 5 eighths. So I'll just now I'll come in here and I'm going to double, I'm going to get into this and right into the, I'll, I'll keep clicking and I get into it and then it turns it. Then I'm going to hit space, parentheses, and I'm going to type in 24 space 5 8 inch parentheses and then I'm going to click it out of it and you can see it doesn't show. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. First I'll show you the way that I used to do it and that's just to drag this a little bit and then it pops on there. You can see that now I've got the uh, 24 and 5 8 dimension uh, right with the uh, 625 millimeters. Now the other way to do it, I'll show you another dimension since that one's done. I'll do this side. And that's 572. So we'll go right back in again and I will clear, type in 572, convert, metric, inch, 22 and a half. So now I'll come in here, I'll do the same thing. I'll come, come in here, get into it, hit the space bar, parentheses, and 22 space one half inch parenthesis and then click of course it goes back it disappears now what I've learned is if I come over here these are different ways to show the format and I'm going to just click off of the one I'm on you can see the one I'm on I'm going to click off of it turns it shows it and then I'll click back and so there it just automatically keeps it centered I don't have to move it and hopefully get it in the right spot the other way to do it is not difficult but um, that's just a you know, a quick workaround that, that I've learned. Now what I want to do is I want to clean it up. I don't want this line going through because that might be confusing in the print. So I'll get on this now. I clicked on it once. I don't want to move it or anything because that'll actually change that 572 dimension. The 22 and a half is not a dimension that um, that layout is recognizing. That's something I I've typed in so it will stay. But if I move these around, the 572 is dynamic, so it'll move. I don't want to do that because I know that's right. I'm going to get into it, and now I can do some adjustments to it, move it around if I need to. And, and you can see that this line is going through here. And you see I move it up and down, but it's not changing that dimension. It's staying 572. If I was not in here and I was just one clicked in, it would actually change that dimension. But you can see this little dot here, and now I'm, you can see that it is not, no longer going across. I'm going right to the point I want. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. The closer in you zoom, the more precision you have. And you know, sometimes I can make this work, and sometimes not. Sometimes I can get it to just, well, not gonna work there. Sometimes I can get rid of this line, so on this side, let's see if I can do that. Take this. Yeah. So anyway, that's not going to quite work for me right now. I'll, I'll figure that out in a minute. For some reason, uh, I, can, I can do it so that I can have that. Okay, apparently it's not going to work for me right there for some reason. But anyway, beyond that, uh, which again, you can see by looking at these others, I was able to clean that up a little bit better. I'm not sure why that's staying long this time. Instead of dropping in, I want it to look like that. So I'm doing something wrong there. But the bottom line, I wanted to show you that putting in that second dimension, at least the way SketchUp slash layout, SketchUp has a bit of a way to do it with uh, with a script that you can download um, but and it works good 
But uh, this is where I do all my dimensioning. I, the only dimensioning I do in SketchUp is just for designing. Once I'm done, I, I delete all the dimensioning or I put them on a layer and I hide the layer because the dimensions don't translate well over here. So I have to do all my dimensioning and my notes and all of that to create a set of plans. So that is my workaround for doing that. And I will just continue on. So you can see why, you know, it'll take me probably by the time this page is done with all the notes and the dimensions, I'll probably have a good eight hours into this one page. But, you know, I have priorities in pages. And the first one was the key page, the key number page. That's where I give all of the parts a, a name and then a number referring to that name because uh, one of the things I'll do is I'll take that key, I'll, co I'll come in here and I'll put each one of those numbers on these parts so that, um, that the people reading the plans will be able to look and see what that part is because, you know, here I've got dimensions and all the details on, and I'll have notes uh, on building it, but it's like, well, what is it? You know, so by having that parts key, that's critical because without that, you can't figure it out. And then the dimensions have to be clear and concise so that um, you know what to cut. And then when I start to build the rest of the plan and I have those zoomed in portal windows and stuff, I can put the key number and I might have more dimension. In fact, I will. But this overall shows so that uh, you can lay out and start cutting your parts. And I'll also, in addition to putting the part number on here, uh, for example, this one here, this is the spreader in which there are four of, they're identical. So I'm only gonna show, show you how to build one, but then I'll put um, the part number and then I'll do parentheses times four or something like that. So you know you gotta make four of these. And uh, again, most of these are singles, but like this one here is a double, so there'll be two of these. And uh, so anyway, that is uh, just kind of behind the scenes on what goes on in SketchUp. It's an incredibly powerful program. Uh, I think that, um, you know, I use it for, for remodeling and for building homes. And I think that <clears throat> I actually spend less time on designing a house because usually I'm designing a house, or exclusively I'm designing a house that I'm going to read the plans. And so I'm not as concerned about everything, but, but where I'm, I'm designing a set of plans that are going to go out to people in lots of different languages so they're already going to, you know, people that speak other languages and I are already going to have to deal with the fact that I'm only doing it in English. Um, there's going to be that issue, but I, I just want it to be really clear. And I know that there are skill levels. And by the questions that I get emailed, I know that if I'm not clear, I'm going to have hundreds of emails. So it's much better for me to spend eight hours now, get this clear and concise and, and so, yeah, I'll have two, 300 hours in the plans, but that's less time than I would have answering individual questions. And, and I do get them. So I've learned from past plans, the clearer and more concise the plans are, the, uh, the better it's going to be for you, but also the better it's going to be for me. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tip on how to do dual dimensioning and layout. And if you like these videos, be sure to give me a thumbs up and keep hanging in there. I know that this is tough, you know, just seeing in this digital wood shop here. I'm like you, I am ready to get down and get some sawdust in my hair. That is coming. I just need to get to the other side on this. And I've got a lot, I've got a lot of little projects that I'm going to do along the way, but this is going to be my main project uh, I'll be working on. And I'm going to videotape the whole thing. So you're going to get to see the router cutting and the, and the Craig machine and all the different things and some of the bugs I work out and the final product. And what the beauty of it is I'll get all that done. I will have the finished product. I will, I'll do a demonstration of it, show it off, and then follow up with the whole series of building it from, from stacking up the full sheets of plywood and breaking them down all the way to making these individual parts and cut, do all these cutouts with my router and templates at, like I've done in the past. And so that will be uh, not only the plans there to make it clear, but you'll have the whole video series so that if you got a question, you can go to the video series and they'll be labeled on what, you know, just like the past ones, 
they'll be titled on what I'm particularly working on or what phase that day so you can click on and watch it and, and when you go into the shop, you'll have a real good understanding of what you're going to build. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch. And remember, if you want to support the channel, uh, besides uh, purchasing a set of plans, you can also use my Amazon store, which is in the link of this video description down below. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.